Welcome to episode 12. Hey, Home Nation! Welcome back. Episode 12. Uh, uh. I don't feel good, y'all. But so what? No one feels good. <laughs> Wait for me. Oh, this is Running Your Pocket Conversations with you, Hope Nation. And... One of the things you realize when you get older is that you got money in the bank. You don't feel good. It don't matter. Your little outfits don't matter. Your clothes don't matter. Your jewelry don't matter. Or you care about getting better. And then maybe something start mattering. You know? But I'm in a place in my life where I love money. I love looking at money. I'm spending it. But I really know it doesn't matter. So... You need to pay your bills and everything. You need money. You be very clear. I like to get money so I can pay for all of this. However, you just realize the way you was fighting and, and doing things and breaking laws, doing all kinds of things to get money. Your grandparents, your elders. They be content with their little social security check and they'll make, they'll pull money out of anywhere. They had always had more money than everybody else because they knew at the end of the day, money you need it, but it's all about family, community, and that kind of stuff. And, and your, fun, in your um, not your financial, your spiritual wellness. Just being happy where you are, joyful where you are. Know what you were going to say? No, I was saying that Mike Epps was talking about that on the Breakfast Club. What's it? Yeah. It, it was a while ago, though. It was like an old interview that he did. And he was saying how, like, money don't matter. Like, he was saying how, um, I forgot what happened. It was like some kind of, like, a natural disaster that happened. And he was like, you know, you had all the rich people in the water with the poor people. Mm-hmm. And it didn't matter that they had more money because at, at, at that particular time, that situation, it couldn't, it couldn't help them. And he was just basically saying, like, you know, like, when you die, you can't take it with you. And yep. every, everybody's even. Yeah. That's um, right. Look at that. You got AR for Yeah, you know. I'm listening. I'll be listening to the jewels. I thought he was going to say some deep pop choke, but he said Mike Epps. Yeah? <laughs> you can get inspiration from anybody. No, I like, I like Mike Epps. I think it's funny. Um, so, yeah. So, be well out here in these streets because health is just like, it's getting crazy. People, one thing I want to talk about real quick is the epidemic of fibroids. Black women losing their uterus and their fallopian tubes and their eggs. and We've always known there's something going on. But when I could sit around and have maybe like eight people with hysterectomies that I know know, and none of them are 50 years old, it's getting crazy. We're growing things in our bodies at an alarming rate. I just had a kidney stone removed on Wednesday. Well, last one's in. It's already been a week. Yeah. Wow. Even recover, yeah, I said, yeah, that's what I was going to do. That's what I was doing. I needed prayers for him. And, uh, yeah, I had, had to go in and have a simple, you know, I had to put me to sleep. But they had to go up in there and get that thing out. Because it's causing a lot of problems. And I still don't feel that hot. So I, I don't know where it's from. But I know a lot of these things stem from fibroids. My anemia was fibroid related. And now I'm not only, I don't have iron deficiency anemia now. I have B12 anemia. And if you know how important B12 is to your central nervous system, to your spine, to your brain. I mean, it's so it's just so important. And what it does is when you when you have B12 deficiency, your blood cells grow bigger than they're supposed to, which means they're unstable. And when, you know, blood cells, they hit, they bounce around, they break. So that means I'm not getting enough oxygen to my heart, to my organs. So I do get short of breath. I have a lot of back pain or whatever. I'm on a thousand whatever units of B12 I get once a week, but it's not working yet. So let's see what happens. Why? Don't say that. I want to know why. He wants to tell me why it's not working. I already know where he's going with this. Oh, you already know. He's part of the propaganda. <laughs> and we'll get to the propaganda in a minute. I was just going to say it. I'm eating a coconut. Yeah, that does not have B12 in it. 
you need, you need some you need some meat. Do you know why B12 <laughs> me has B12 in it? <laughs> nah, but you gotta tell you gotta tell the people why B12 has meat. Yeah. B12 what? B12 has meat. No why? <laughs> no why why meat has B12 in it? You gotta tell the people, right? Okay. So a lot of people, mm. you know, I'm vegan. <laughs> And <laughs> she's funny. <laughs> a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, you're vegan. When are you gonna get your B, your B12? Or where are you gonna get your protein? Freaking protein B12 crackers. Listen, who? <laughs> it gets annoying because, hey, where are you gonna get your good health from? Like, everybody say that when you see somebody with a big fat burger hand out their mouth. Hey, where are you gonna get their low cholesterol from? Yeah, you're not. Anyway, <laughs> that was funny." <laughs> B12 animals have B12 in their bodies because they eat vegetation that is unwashed. We don't. We get all our stuff triple clean, hash oil, all kind of stuff like that. So animals pass on that dirty, the dirt to us, and we get B12 in our guts. Now here's a couple of things about B12. Now, if you already have some type of issue within your gut and they have pernicious anemia, which causes you not to be able to absorb B12, so no matter how much of it you ate, you still cannot get B12 into your system. You still have to get the B12 shots. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter if you ate a whole cow, a veal, you know, it did a llama, it wouldn't matter. You still wouldn't get B12. <laughs> So B12 is something that you get from dirt. And I was having this conversation with them, like back in the days, you heard of the red, the red clay people, yeah. the people from down south, Geechee low country folk, the red <laughs> dirt people that had it on the shoe, they would eat dirt, put it in a little bag and just sit there and eat it like candy. And they were smart because I bet you they didn't have no B12 deficiency. They was getting that good old dirt. They got minerals, iron, they got all of that stuff. There was other stuff in the red clay, right? Yeah. Like other yeah. yeah. A bunch of minerals. And like I said, iron, copper, zinc, your mm -hmm. manganese, all those kind of things. Like in dirt, because that's why things grow out of the dirt, because it's nutritious. So I don't want to really sit on this eating some dirt stuff, because I don't want to keep taking these shots for the rest of my life, and I also don't want to keep feeling like an 80 year old by 6 o'clock. <laughs> so that being said, Keep running. <laughs> and look, I you brought up that? the dirt from Africa. I can still apply. I'm not even that. <laughs> <laughs> she don't even know where the dirt is. You can figure out a way to incorporate it into one of your vegan ingredients. You can put it in a smoothie, I'm assuming. A uh, dirt yeah. cake. Yeah, there you go. I'm not going to copyright that. Well, we're going to have to go down south and get some dirt. Probably buy it. More dirt. Send me some dirt. <laughs> don't send me some dirt with manure in it. <laughs> <laughs> Coconut milk. Huh? What? <laughs> coconut milk. I'm drinking coconut milk. Don't tell them what I'm drinking because you know it's a red cup. Alright. Say no energy. <laughs> coconut milk. You act like it. <laughs> I don't feel well. Anyway. So what you were just saying about if you have a certain issue with the stomach, that doesn't pertain to you though. I'm not really sure. And I'm glad you put that. <laughs> hey, Tay Tay! You go, Tay Tay! I have something going on in my stomach after the surgery. They left air. I need some unspecified free floating fluid in my stomach. And it could very well be a reason why I'm not absorbing B12. So, because I have, I do use the nutritional yeast for my vegans. We know that's a good source of vitamin B12. So, I do use that a lot. So, there's no reason why I'm this. B12 deficient. It's definitely not coming from veganism. Like, is there well, they want to know if it's not broke, don't fix it. But they broke it when they went in and did the surgery. So, but they don't really, no one wants to touch it. But it's a, you know, it's one of those things that later on down the line, if I want it, like my dad, when he had to have emergency surgery on his stomach because his, he had a um, pal, uh, a pal, a bowel perforation. That's what he had when y'all went in Alabama. Yeah. So they're concerned that I may get that. So they they just playing with. So playing they don't with do something that's preventative opposed to waiting to see if that's. Well, it's nothing they can do, but have to go in and do open stomach surgery. Who wants that scar? 
I'll be looking like a roast beef like country. So that's my dad. <laughs> His stomach look like a roast beef tied up. I don't want to look like that. I don't think Yahweh would want to do me like that, right? So that's why, you know, I'm, I'm playing around with them because they got to be a better surgery than that. And I've seen that. So everybody comes out looking like a roast beef. I don't want that. That's not right. So anyway. There's no natural way to move No, hair. it's trapped. So it's in a place where the air came from. When you have when you have surgery, guys, women, anybody who has abdominal surgery, what they do is they blow you up with C2, CO2, so that they can see all your organs in their you know natural state. They blow them up so that way when they make cuts, they don't make, make a mistake and cut a liver, cut this or cut that, cut your bowels. So they make them big and tight. And, that, and that's why after stomach surgery, you see a lot of women and stomach will be real big with men. It's all air. And that's why you need to be constipated and you know, you gotta make sure to get all that air out. Well, my ear mostly left, except for this little pocket of air. I want to just live with me and I don't want it to leave. And that's because I had the myomectomy surgery back in March. So, fibroid removal surgery. So, shout out to my fibroid warriors. Um, I feel for the women. Our reproductive systems are a mess. Um, years of abuse, um, whether it's food, you know, other people did other things with their private parts, whatever it is. You don't want to abuse the womb, I mean, because it's going to bite your ass, okay? So I wish I didn't eat so much sugar and so much damn milk. Man, you know, I think that's what did it to me. I, had a, I used to love me some half and half, and we... Why? <laughs> I did. Like half half. Yeah. I don't drink half and half. No, you did. No. Like, yeah, what was I? <laughs> drink, drink half and half. I like did. Juice. <laughs> so mucus and all these things, wear and tear. You know, you know, other things, wear and tear on your womb. So just take care of your womb health. Um, women, if you're interested in looking up someone who's really into womb health, Queen of Four. She's dope. So. Google her, Queen A F U A, Queen of Four. She tells you a lot of stuff you can do um, to clean out your, your, you know, your womb and to heal it, and not that vaginal rejuvenation crap where you go to those spas and you sit on this thing. You know what? They're shooting up in you, so just don't do that. Or who's on the first? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is the water clean? Is it filtered? Like, don't do that. Your womb is sacred, and that's I think her book is called Sacred. Womb, a sacred woman, queen of fools. She's dope. She has, also has a place in Brooklyn where you can go like an institute. And she goes around the country lecturing and whatnot. So she's she's dope. And she has good practitioners. I did reach out to her when I was going through my situation with five words. But I was too far gone by the time I found out. So I had to have surgery. So shout out to all you guys. So I'm going to take that off the list. We did, okay, so let's just do entertainment, all right? Let's get all the entertainment out the way. Okay. Y'all see small lap. Do we care? Mm. No. Not really. I mean, you know, he has some big, major, heavy hitter political people, and even the politicians are mad. So you know he has some powerful people behind him. So whatever he did, only God can judge him now. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Really, only God can judge him. So, you know, we gotta leave that one alone. So, let's see what happens with Jesse. Is Empire gonna put him back on the show? The last two episodes they took him off. Is it gonna change public perception about him? To me, he just looks like a liar still. And it's really nothing he can do about that. But right now, just be good, do good, and just use this platform he now has to right his wrongs. And so, just live a better life, right? This is one of those things where lies just keep getting bigger, how lies just grow, and they kind of get snowballed out of control. And so, it was time to stop that. So anyway, so that was Jesse Smollett. Wendy Williams. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy Williams. Um, in new developments, the Oops Baby, like she called McCannon's Baby a Oops Baby, her husband's oops baby was born on Wednesday and then had to be taken to the hospital. So I don't know if it was born in a hospital someplace else. And they decided to take the baby back to another hospital in Philadelphia, which I hear is like the best premier hospital in Philadelphia because the baby was sick. 
the baby had marijuana in its system. So he chose bro, another person who likes to get high. Or maybe he likes to get high. I don't know. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, like, I don't know why she thought it was okay to smoke weed while pregnant. It's not okay to smoke anything while pregnant. Imagine being a little baby in a tight space and then your mother's making it even tighter by puffing and blowing air into you and getting, getting you hot. Or maybe she had an edible, who knows? Um, how it goes, that story's developing. And then last night, I heard that Wendy was rushed to the hospital because she ditched her sober coach and she ditched the sober home and they, when they found her, she was drunk and they had to take her to the hospital and all this. Man, it's just going down. Basement over there. Ooh, Poor shit. little Kevin Hunter. So, just, I'm just praying for her. Like, that can happen to anybody. It's just, why it's newsworthy why it's happening to her is because she talked so bad about so many people. Right. You know, so, you know, this is karma. This is, um, what's that other thing? Humble Pie. It's all of it. She's at Corner Cafe having a big plate of humble pie. Well, mm. Yeah, so anyway, so that's what's happening now. So prayerfully she can make it through. I don't want to see anything bad happen to her or anybody. The child was innocent and didn't know um, it was going to be born into this. So, But the adults know, so that's it. So anyway, moving on along. What else did I have? In terms of, oh, Cardi B. <laughs> Old video surface I was talking about how she was drugging dudes and robbing them and Cardi. But you know, that's why she, you know, deleted her Instagram. She did she deleted her Instagram a lot of times because she was cleaning up her image, you know, and that's what got her a million one followers before Love and Hip Hop. The things she was saying on her social media. And obviously it wasn't so alarming then, so why is it so alarming now? You know, but in this era of Me Too and everybody um, drugging people and having sex with sleepy people, and she <laughs> she's kind of gangster. She was robbing them. <laughs> That's not funny, but just the thought of it. She's so Bronx for that. So anyway, I'm in Bronx. Anyway, so that's what she was doing. So they were saying, came they, the hashtag surviving Cardi B was going around. And so she cleaned it up. She came back with a statement saying that she did what she could, that she had limited resources at that time for money, and she only drug and robbed guys she was already sleeping with. That made it a lot better. So, <laughs> do you think that excuse makes it better? It don't make sense. <laughs> to be honest, that's so actually worse. Why would you need to? Why would you need to drug and rob them if you're? They probably wasn't giving her no money. Nah, cause that's a lie. That's why. They're playing the game. Yeah, she wasn't. She she tried to clean it up. You know, she needs a better focus. It's gonna be all right. That's what's going on. Well, the girl that she has patience. She got her this far, but you, there's always a statement somebody can only get you but so far. Because yeah. right now she needs crisis management and. Yes. That's what she <laughs> needs. So, PR, certain PR people can only take you to certain places. And, and uh, patients did a hell of a job. Because no one would take on Cardi B as a client. And she left her job at a firm to go represent Cardi. So, they're doing a phenomenal job. Now it's time to, you know, she gonna need some big dogs, you know, bigger, bigger dogs. She got big dogs. She yeah, needs some big dogs. comparing her to um, Cosby, saying what's the difference yeah. between him drugging, supposedly drugging right. women, yeah. and her saying that she was drugging it. What's the difference? Why is there no? Mm -hmm. But we all know why that surface, right? So we can have this conversation, right. you know. So now we can get more women involved because they were even saying. That Oprah has settled some sexual harassment lawsuits in the past. So <laughs> things are coming out slowly, slowly but surely about people. And I think the sexual thing goes both ways. You know, women, we've been taught to weaponize our bodies. We use our bodies as a weapon. But then we don't like it when it gets used back. You know, so that's just the way it goes. Men give up the money, we give up the goods. You know, now we're in an era where women are making their own money. And I think a lot of the older cases come about because women who live through times where women weren't as powerful, like, man, this happened to me, and if this wouldn't happen to me, then maybe I would be Oprah Winfrey or, you know, somebody powerful like that. So 
You got a lot of bitter people who thought sex was going to get them to the top, and it didn't. It did work for some people, but not for most people. So, Cardi, you'll be fine. Patience, you'll be fine. Y'all doing a fantastic job over there. It's an old sweet. She was young, too, at the same time. Like, we're talking about she's 26, 27 now. Imagine she was, like, 18, 19 then. So, what, what you thought she was going to do? I just started off the show saying that, you know, we've done some stuff. Everybody's done some stuff that you regret. We're living at an age where health and regrets are, like, neck and neck. Things you've done in your past, the way you ate in your past is catching up to you. And the things you've done is catching up to you now. So, you have a lot to sit and think about and process. So, I think she'll be fine. It wasn't like she was 40 years old. She was running the moves, you know. She was a young girl. And options probably were limited. And how old were they? Exactly. <laughs> it probably was Bill Cosby. Mm. <laughs> 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 Should have been the first Exactly. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but that's exactly <laughs> the point. Probably why she did. Mm-hmm. So, the team and I, we went and saw us over the weekend. <laughs> And we're gonna check, make sure we good, make sure us is good. We tape and we rolling. Okay. So went to us, and initially, I was like, you know, into it because I'm like waiting for something. It was like watching The Shining, and I think, and I really okay. think that this is where you know he is the homage to old cinema where. It's the scary music, and it's like not too much talking, but you know something's gonna happen, but you don't really know what's gonna happen. And then it's over, and you thought the thing that you thought was gonna happen didn't happen, and you kind of get disappointed. But then when I, I said, you know, I gave it a bad review that I didn't put up because I wanted people to go and see it before I put the review up, and I also wanted to sit with it and make sure I wasn't being influenced by the herd. And so, and so I liked it. What happened was I got, I fell into that trap where I was expecting it to be like Get Out. And it was a totally different movie from Get Out. Get Out was basically talking about a lot of things we talk about in our, in our culture and black society, things that happen. And it did all of that for you. Us was more of a Twilight Zony, feely, sci-fi horror movie where psychological thriller and so i feel in that particular genre because i love twilight zone i love things like that it was good it was good you probably want to have to see it twice to kind of really get to you know get it get it but it was good um the fact that we have alternate worlds out there and for me i took it from a spiritual standpoint if you haven't seen it yet i'm not gonna ruin it for you but being grateful knowing that you're going through what you're going through here in this realm but imagine if you were some you were the same person in another realm what you be what you could be going through you know like that it's that like sunken place 2.0 like that he talked about and get out like what about the people that stuck in the sunken sunken place you don't always have to so it's like we live we're, we live you know in poles we're bipolar by nature you know what i'm saying so imagine if you live in the lower self opposed to your higher self and how the lower self must feel. And sometimes when we let our demons take over, the lower self can prevail. Okay? So I'm going to tell you because if I tell you more, I'll be with the movie. So that was my critique and my breakdown. I got it. I lo- the music was scary. Lupita Nyong'o, she looked scary. Mm-hmm. Um, very, <laughs> reading your skin highs. <laughs> I did hear um, an interview she did. She said she would not do, if there was a part two, she wouldn't do it again because it was a lot of work. It was very grueling on her. She had to go to a vocal coach and an old old meteorologist, which is an ENT, ears, ears, eyes, nose, and throat doctor. And she had to learn about all these different things. Like if you suffer like mad traumatic stress that, you know, some people talk about not speaking for many years. And the damage it does to the vocal cords and stuff. And that's why she was doing that talk, that voice she had. Because she was mimicking somebody who's been through a very traumatic experience. And that's learning how to speak again. So I thought that was dope. Um, Samaya, around the way. May, May. She was just reading this great article. Do you know 
Um, for publication only? I don't know. Okay, well, it was about Jordan Peele. Um, yeah, so basically, we were just <laughs> talking about how he, um, he's in a great place where he's trying to bat, like figure out fame and things like that and how he has the power to come to bring this whole idea to Universal and not to basically have a black family play the lead role. Mm-hmm. Yes, for, for us. And um, he was like, he's, that's just like a great thing that he can do. And like, that's his calling and mm-hmm. things like that. And that he wouldn't have it another way where mm-hmm. he would put a white family or white man in the lead role. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I can respect that. Yeah. How we feel about that? Us gross the highest grossing, mm-hmm. highest grossing box office numbers of any Original horror film, seventy million dollars. Let me get some of that. And you know, something that came from us. <laughs> I mean, us. <laughs> you know, because we tend to support, um, which is freaking awesome. I just wish that support went, or we could like so scatter that support around. Like, see, I has this big movement right now. He's still, you know, banning Gucci, and so does Fifty Seven. And they've been promoting more and more businesses, but it's funny, right? The businesses that they supported, and I ain't hating, the royal brothers and sisters, a lot of them come from Africa. What are we doing here in America? They have a handbag company that rivals Gucci from South Africa. I'm sure there are black handbag makers here. That's the problem that I have is like, I love that we can outsource and go to Africa and other black countries, but we have everything here, but we don't support each other the way that we need to. I've gone through it my entire time. I used to sell name belts back in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. I was bringing it back, baby. I brought back name belts. I brought back rhinestone scarves. I had a whole movie, Louis Vuitton scarves. People wasn't wearing this stuff. I was weirdo. And people were laughing at me because I was bringing this look back from the 80s that they didn't quite, they thought was over with. But me, me knowing fashion is that nothing is ever dead. It just gets recycled and everybody puts their own little spin on it. I made so much money selling name belts, but it wasn't until after I got, you know, the hood celebrities to wear them and to buy them. Then people bought into the idea. We have to stop waiting for the, you know, celebrities to endorse something. If you like something, you like it. Are you going to wait and eat something because a celebrity said to eat it? Yeah. Most of y'all didn't start drinking smoothies and green drinks to see y'all saw somebody on Instagram drinking it. It looked kind of smart and healthy. And, you know, you got influenced like that. But, like, fashion, whatever you got, is in you. Don't wait for somebody to tell you what you like. Then you become a sheeple. You are individual, not a sheep. So that's my rant. But um, Jordan Peele, shout out to him. I, I just pray that his, he keeps his agenda going because you know you start off like this and you end up like this. So just um, <laughs> hope tap my brother. Just keep it going. And if you ever need me, I'm available. I act. Yeah. I do that. <laughs> Come get me. Come get us. Put up boots. And don't send the tethered people. You come. <laughs> don't send no people on red suits either. So I've been watching. I don't know if you've been experiencing it. Vegan propaganda. I've been. <laughs> I've been seeing so many bad things about vegans. I am a vegan. I wouldn't say I'm a super, I don't think I'm a super vegan. I don't, because I'm not alkaline. I used to be alkaline. But I don't want to, like, limit myself too much, especially with a lot of things I got going on. And where I live at, it wouldn't be conducive to live in alkaline all the time because they, the options are not that great. If I live in California or someplace where we had better weather, better produce was coming in, then I could see me doing it. But so, you know, I do rice occasionally. I do breads, you know, just I don't consume any animal proteins whatsoever uh, under no circumstances. So, <laughs> <laughs> or honey. I don't eat honey either. 
So with that being said, I was watching something popped up on my, you know, they know who to show it to. It popped up on my YouTube talking about vegan made her hair fall out. This girl had a head full of hair, but she said, oh, yeah, fell out. Her teeth is falling out her thing. She had teeth in her mouth. She had hair in her head. And she said because she had been vegan for so many years that her body just started falling apart. And she watched her grandfather eat a piece of fish and eat some other animal. And so she decided to add it back into her diet. And now everything is all together. I think she's eating everything. Um, but now she's all fine and good. And she just didn't want her YouTubers to judge her on her choices. Then I saw another girl. This girl is black. This girl I'm about to talk about is white. She had been a vegan for 15 years, and she was saying that her grandparents lived until they were 90-something. They, Her whole family loves meat. She used to love meat, and she was having mental illness because of not eating meat. And so she went back to eat meat, and then she said that veganism was um, some type of agenda that that the government has now put out for people to be vegan. It's just so much stuff. All I have to say about this is this. Before the Europeans came to Africa introducing chickens, Africans, black people, did not eat meat. And they lived longer and were very healthy. That's why they were warriors, big big old rippling muscles. The chickens and meats were introduced to us through I Europeans. Africa had chickens. Who? Africa. No, no. The they had no, no chickens. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was introduced. You know, it came on the boats. When they came, they brought those things. They brought poison in very various forms. And meat was one of them. So, I choose not to eat meat. Um, because I see, I know life on both sides. I was a um, carnivore. Then I was vegan for many years. Then I went back to being a carnivorous. And I got really, really sick this time around. And I feel much better. You know? I've lost some weight. I have definitely feel better. But, you know, I've got these little other issues that were there when I was eating meat. So, it had nothing to do with veganism. <laughs> really watch something. What, you, what they said that vegans are dying at an alarming rate. I haven't seen very many vegan funerals on Instagram. <laughs> I'm sure the way the vegan community is, if that was really happening, we would know about it. <clears throat> what you going to say? No, I was doing this. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought maybe you knew it. Nah, no, nothing. No. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> you know nothing about it. I don't know nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't know about any of that, but it, it has worked for me, and it hasn't been a struggle for me because I, I just like the way that I feel, and I don't like killing things to put it in my mouth and eat it, and I feel good that I don't do that anymore. Um, so I'm good with that. Um, let's see. So, oh, one more thing before we get in. Oh, Tam Tips. Let's go into Tam Tips. Tam Tips. Tam Tips. <laughs> Tam has tips for y'all, um, Fallon. With your foul names. How your resume, you should name your resume. Not just name it resume one or resume two. <laughs> you should name it, you know, Tim will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> something. Yeah. <coughs> so, if you think about it, hundreds of thousands of people are applying to the exact same job as you every single day. One of the things that you can do to help you stand out is save as, with your file name, something that you're actually going to be doing. So, opposed to just having your first and last name, and then resume, so like for myself, Tracy Matthews resume, I can put um, Tracy Matthews pro producer or whatever it is that I do. That way, if they see all these resumes in their queue and it's all first name, last name, resume, resume one, resume, 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 then comes up you, Tracy Matthews pro producer, oh, let me click on that one. Every little thing counts when it comes to standing out. Yep. So you want to make sure you save as whatever it is that you're doing opposed to just putting resume or your first and last name and resume or whatever the case may be. Don't know that that's what it is when they open it, but at least your file name can have just a little bit more edge than 
the other hundred thousand people. That's right. I agree. That's all I got for y'all today. <laughs> but that was good. I agree. You should name it something because so, you have where we normally put resume, you know, say something else. You name it. You name it. So <laughs> you know how Lorene you Reynolds resume or cook. So instead oh, of okay. putting that, you'll put Chez Lorene Catering or something to like you'll name okay. the actual document. You don't even put no job no more. What no, you doing? <laughs> maybe somebody had that question out there. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> After she's laughed the whole show, she <laughs> asked a question. You <laughs> said <laughs> the cotton candy. That's <laughs> it, <laughs> Okay. So, sugar. Real quick, I did, um, I did, um, you know what? I'll probably need this for next week. It's, it's called the FIRE movement. It's, um, financial independence and retirement early. We'll talk about that next week because we're going to shut down in a second. But what I want to talk about briefly is, look that up. It's a whole movement where millennials are retiring by 35 and been traveling all over the world and stuff like that. No, that's a request. That was good, right? <laughs> I want to do that. I ain't no millennial, but I was, and I'm past 35, but shoot, I can retire right now. Yay! Hey, Tay Tay! So what I want to talk about is communication. I'm going to bust this down real quick. Communication yeah. is crucial. Yay. Yay! And you must know your audience, okay? Over the weekend, I debate with a lot of people for no reason, mainly family members, but me and my brother was having one of our very many heated debates. And if you know me and my brother, you know we could go there. So anyway, when I, you know, we, we talk, we argue, because I call it argue, because my heart rate gets elevated and I'm getting upset. It's no longer a debate. It's not a conversation. It's an argument. And what we discover, because I asked him some very key questions, when you're at in life and your experiences, it shapes the way you interact with people. You must know your audience. If you're going to say something that's going to be controversial or whatever, and you get an answer that you don't like, you have to say, hey, is the answer wrong or is it me? The way I perceive things because of what I've been through and the people that I'm used to dealing with. If you're used to dealing with a different class of people and you come down off your perch and you deal with the little lowly people, you can't expect them to have the same reaction as somebody of power and influence. You know, so you have to be very careful how you talk to people. Not just because you should just be careful because it causes an argument, but you have to check yourself. You have to check in with yourself like, hey, is this an appropriate conversation to have with this person? Am I having the appropriate reaction with this person? You can't treat everybody as if they're from the streets. You got to treat family like family and street people like street people. And if you find good friends in the street, then you treat them like family too. So what all I'm saying is please know your audience. When I worked in juvenile detention, we used to have speakers come in. And they would say crazy stuff. And I'm like, they don't know who they're talking to, these kids, you know, and the kids would boo them or not listen to them or whatever. It was kind of like safari indictment. And when safari, if you're familiar with safari and what went on indictment, they start throwing shoes at him and, and stuff like that, whatever they saw with food. It's because he didn't know his audience. And when you start doubting someone because they're not listening to you, and like, let me tell you something, little suckers. I, I done lived my life and blah, 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 blah. You done lost them. You know what I'm saying? They ain't listening to you. You're just an old, angry person. So, I want you to go into the rest of the week. Checking in with you to say is something to really, really do. Okay? Let's talk. What's our time? Tell me. Tell me you did it. 38. Uh, um, we almost did it. I said that I edited it now. But anyway, I tried. If, if we kept one minute, I had, to, I had to tell you about that. Because now I'm going to 20 seconds. You know, just... I want you, I want us all communicating better. We're having communication issues all over the world because first of all, we're playing our phones too much. We're texting too much. We're emailing too much. We're not having eye to eye conversations. We're not seeing people's faces when we say something that's like not sitting well in somebody's spirit. We don't get a chance to see that and that's important. So before you send that text, if you feel, uh, 
something is wrong with the text. Right. If you, right before you hit okay or send and you right. feel like, uh, let me reread this, it's wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> so just erase that whole thing and, and start over. over. That's you know, so just, just check in with yourself. That's it. Anybody got anything to say? No? no? Yeah, we all kind of, just kind of sick. All right, I need mean, coconuts and coconut milk. I'm trying to get it together. <laughs> you can eat the skin. I know that. Yeah. So I love you all, Hope Nation. <laughs> we about to just start home with our <laughs> I love you all, Hope Nation. See you next week. I, I'm praying for all y'all. Mm.